According to the CDC, in 2019, the leading cause of death in Idaho was heart disease. I spoke to Dr. Faravar of St. Alphonsus to learn more. Dr. Faravar, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I want to talk about heart health and help us understand what are the most common heart conditions that you see? As a surgeon, the most common conditions that I see are coronary artery disease. So coronary artery bypass grafting is the treatment. I also see valvular disease, so aortic valve stenosis, aortic valve insufficiency, mitral valve stenosis and mitral valve insufficiency. And occasionally we see aneurysms which need to be repaired as well. And, and tell us, how do you approach treatment for these types of heart disease and are there any advancements in these treatments? Treatments can be percutaneous, which is done by a cardiologist, or it can be surgical, done by a surgeon. There have been advances in the past few years. There's been more stenting done for coronary artery disease. And there's been something called TAVR, which is transaortic valve replacement, and that's replacing the aortic valve through a needle and a wire that goes up into your heart and puts a stent valve on it. There's also something called mitra clip, which is used to uh, fix the mitral valve using a minimally invasive method. Additionally, there are smaller incisions that we're doing all the time, and there are advances coming all the time that make it less invasive. Wow, okay, and tell me a little more too about those less invasive approaches, those non-surgical ways to treat like that uh, mit mitra clip. One of the most exciting regions is TAVR, and TAVR is for aortic stenosis, basically means a tightening of the valve in your heart called the aortic valve. And with that, we have balloon expandable and self-expanding valves that in 96% of the patients can be put without opening the chest and go through the groin with a wire and a stent. Mitra clip is an innovative technique in which you use a small clip, sort of like a clothesline, to bring the two leaflets of the mitral valve together and to decrease the leak of the mitral valve. And give us a better understanding too of the risks that are involved with heart surgery. So the risks of most open heart surgery are one to 2% chance of dying within a month for any reason whatsoever. So we consider that low risk. And the risk has been getting lower and lower every year, despite us having sicker and sicker patients to operate on. Um, the, the next most important risk is stroke. And the risk of stroke is about one to 2% within a month of surgery. These are the two main important risks that people care about. There are other risks, but they're much less often. Wow, those numbers still are very impressive. Uh, and, and I do want to talk though too about what we've heard a lot in uh, the media, which is that possible correlation between COVID-19 and heart illness. So is there a link between COVID-19 and heart illness? And if so, you know, what are the possible risks and the, the possible treatments for that? Yes, um, COVID being a relatively new disease, data is coming out every week on this important topic. It seems about 7% of patients who get admitted to the hospital with COVID actually end up having heart failure and end up getting readmitted within one to three months for heart failure. And interestingly, about 30% of patients in the hospital have what's called myocarditis. And that's just a technical way of saying inflammation of the heart. So it's more common than we think. Now the myocarditis may not affect everyone and some may not even notice it, but it's something that's important to have on our radar. The reason for this is that's how COVID acts. It inflames your immune system. Now the treatments for it um, are also evolving and they range from medications such as the steroids, dexamethasone, which is probably um, the most prevalent and easy to get, to medications such as antiretrovirals, such as remdesivir, to really much more sophisticated treatments like ECMO. And ECMO stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. It's a way to place a patient on an artificial heart to support them as their own body recovers from the COVID. And doctor, where can people go to learn more? People can go to stalphonsus.org and look up questions about any of these ailments as well as any of our providers.